But we know quite clearly from the evidence that's been published that there are clear recommendations from the international community on cancer prevention. And these guidelines are relevant for people with a diagnosis of cancer and who have completed treatment or are living um, well uh, with a diagnosis of cancer. So here they are, there are nine recommendations of which five really relate to our um, uh, diet because it's such an important part of cancer prevention. So be a healthy weight, be physically active, eat a diet rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, beans. That's because these are the main foods that have been associated with cancer prevention and also can lead to a lower risk of other chronic conditions like heart disease, type two diabetes and dementia. Limit fast food consumption and also sugar sweetened beverages. Not only do they create um, the right environments for over consumption of calories and contribute to weight gain, um, there is a small amount of data su suggesting that it may even increase our risk uh, of cancer. Limit consumption of red and processed meat. I would say avoid. There is no need for red and processed meat in the diet. It only adversely affects our health. It's clearly terrible for the environment as well because the production of meat from ruminant animals is one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. Limit alcohol consumption. We'll come back to this. I tell my patients there is no safe limit of alcohol consumption when it comes to preventing cancer and surviving well after a diagnosis of cancer. Do not use supplements for cancer prevention and I'll talk about that later. In addition, if you're a mum, breastfeed your baby if you can because this has benefits for baby and also for the mother who will have a reduced risk of breast cancer during her lifetime. And of course, as I've said, after a cancer diagnosis, follow these recommendations because they're associated with an improved quality of life, better remission, longer survival. And of course, it um, this type of diet and lifestyle approach reduces the risk of other common non-communicable diseases that you'll be hearing about over the next 17 days. There's a great document from the American Cancer Society, um, really easy to read, highly recommend it. Um, and I've just summarized the data that they have included in this document, which is a really good reference for everybody. Um, and what they say is that there's strong evidence to support a plant-based dietary pattern for prevention of cancer, whereas we should be avoiding red and processed meats, sugar sweetened beverages, processed foods in general, and alcohol consumption. We should be striving to be a healthy body weight and and incorporate movement into our daily lives and of course um, um, avoid tobacco smoking. In the middle column you can see where there's um, equivocal evidence or some small amounts of evidence so I will come back again to dairy. Again, there's no need for dairy in the diet. Um, there is some confusion over the role of dairy in the diet for cancer prevention because consumption of dairy does reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. But this is purely um, because of um, uh, uh, the calcium in the dairy. And obviously we can get healthy sources of calcium from beans and greens and fortified plant milks if we need to top, top that up. Um, I'll talk about organic foods later. Um, coffee is a healthy addition to the diet if it's something that you enjoy and it doesn't adversely affect you. It's interesting to know that sleep can also um, impact your um, risk of cancer, getting adequate restorative sleep about seven to nine hours a, a night. And we do know that people who work shifts and who work overnight um, can have an increased risk of uh, cancer. I've added green tea to this list. It wasn't in the document, but there is some quite compelling, compelling evidence that the consumption of green tea is healthy for a number of reasons. So again, if you enjoy it, it's a good addition to the diet. And then on the right hand column, there's some um, items um, that we all inquire about from time to time um, that are present in our, our um, everyday lives that we wonder about cancer prevention. And at the moment, there's no evidence one way or other. Doesn't mean that that won't change as more data comes along. But at the moment, there is no additional evidence there that it contributes or, or to cancer adversely. The trouble is we have all this information, um, but when you do surveys of the general public and probably even health professionals, many people don't even recognize this information as being relevant um, to them. So when it comes to surveys in America, less than 50% of Americans recognize that alcohol, diets high in meat, diets low in fruits and vegetables, and insufficient physical activity um, have a clear link to cancer development. Now, what I feel is not given enough airtime when we're talking about um, cancer um, 
prevention is the impact of underlying chronic conditions like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, renal failure, liver disease, because just the fact that you have an underlying chronic illness um, can increase your risk of um, certain cancers. And this is because of the shared mechanisms that are present um, that create a lot of our common illnesses, including cancer. Um, and this stress to the cells, the ad adverse gut microbiome, the inflammation, all lead to a host of different um, diseases. Um, and this study followed more than four 400,000 Taiwanese people for over eight years. And they showed that around a fifth of new cancer cases were due to the fact that individuals had underlying chronic illness. And a third of cancer deaths um, were because of these underlying common chronic diseases, which were leading to an increased risk of cancer. And if you had an unhealthy lifestyle, plus additional chronic conditions, you shortened your life by 13 to 16 years. Now, it's not all bad news because the study also shows that even if you had these risk factors, if all you did was adequate physical activity, you could reduce this excess risk by 40%. Another study from um, the health professionals follow up study and the nurses health study in Harvard showed that type two diabetes, for example, increased the risk of cancer, mainly in the first eight years after a diagnosis, because this is when insulin levels are particularly high. And we know that insulin drives the abnormal proliferation of, of cancer cells. <laughs>